am Dr. Romano, professor of organic chemistry here at Romano Scientific and the creator of the Destroyer books. I am here with Professor Blois, who was actually my professor in college, to do some math. We've done a lot of videos so far, um, and I thought Professor Blois was done, but I must have got over a thousand emails in the past year. They want more. So um, that's all I hear. They want more videos, so Professor Blois is here to show you how to do new types of questions that you've never seen before that's going to enchant you. All right, Professor okay, Blois. Well, let's be enchanting then. Uh, this type of question will be preceded by this. This is the preamble. In this question, compare the two quantities given using the information provided, quantity A and quantity B. If quantity A is larger, choose answer A. If quantity B is larger, choose B. If the two quantities are equal, choose C. If the relationship cannot be determined, choose D. Okay, we're going to do two problems with that uh, structure. Okay, let's look at the first. One of the roots of x squared plus ax minus 15 is equal to 0 is x equals 5. Which quantity is larger? Quantity A, which is A, the coefficient of the middle term here, or quantity B, negative 2. Well, how do we do this? Well, the easiest way to do it, if we know one of the roots is x equals 5, let's just plug that into the quadratic that's given. So we have x squared plus ax minus 15 equals 0. If x equals 5, we have 5 squared plus 5 times a minus 15 equals 0. We're just going to solve for a now. So 5 squared, that'll be 25. 25 minus 15 is 10 plus 5a equals 0. We get 5a equals negative 10. Divide both sides by 5. a equals negative 2. Well, there's our answer. Quantity A is A, quantity B is negative 2, the choice is choice C, both quantities are the same. Okay, now let's go to the second problem of the similar structure. Uh, which is larger, quantity A or quantity B? We have two expressions now, x squared plus 2 and 3x minus 1. Well, one way to do this is to make a little table x squared plus 2, 3x minus 1, and fill in some x values. And we can see that the x squared plus 2 is always larger. We can see that when x equals 2, they're pretty close. But we don't know whether the value of the 3x minus 1 may be larger at some point that's in between those integer values. And we want to look at a larger picture just as opposed to just a, a single selection. So what we're going to do, we're going to use the a visual approach to this. The graph of y equals x squared plus 2 is a parabola that's raised two units off the x-axis like this. And 3x minus 1 is the straight line with y-intercept negative 1 and slope 3, 1, 2, 3, and over 1. Okay, so here's a, a schematic. This is only a schematic diagram of how, these, how this parabola and how this line may appear on a graph. Okay, so we have case 1 in which the line and the parabola do not intersect. In this case, in case one, the parabola, the y values of x squared plus 2, will always be larger than the y values of 3x minus 1. Okay, that would be choice A. In case two, there is one point of intersection between the line and the parabola, in which case there is one point where the two y values are equal. The two values here are equal, but for the remainder of the x values, the y values of the parabola would be greater. So for that ambiguous case, we don't have enough information to answer the question specifically. So the answer to case 2 would be D, not enough information. And finally, we have case 3, where the line intersects the parabola at two points of intersection. And in between those two points of intersection, the y values of the line are greater, but otherwise they're equal at the points of intersection, and otherwise the lines, the values of the parabola are greater. So, which one is it? And in that case, we also choose D, not enough information. No interval is specified. Okay, so how do we determine? Is it case one, case two, or case three? Very simple. Let's set the two equations equal to each other. X squared plus two is equal to 3x minus 1. And this is an algebraic way of asking the graphical question, where do these two graphs intersect? Do they intersect at no point, at one point, 
or at an interval of points. Okay, so let's solve this. How do we solve this? Let's bring everything over to one side. So add one to both sides, plus three is equal to zero. It's a quadratic. We're gonna find the roots of this quadratic. If the quadratic has one root, it's case two. If the quadratic has two roots, it's case three. If the quadratic has no roots, it's case one. So, how do we solve this? It's not factorable, but we're gonna put it into the quadratic formula. Okay, now the, the portion under the, uh, in the quadratic formula under the square root is b squared minus 4ac. And that's going to determine whether there's going to be uh, an intersection here. b squared minus 4ac, let's see what we have here. Uh, a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 3, c is equal to 3. So b squared minus 4ac becomes negative 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times 3, which is 9 minus 12, which is minus three. Okay, so if we put this into the quadratic formula, the portion under the square root is negative, which means there are no real solutions. These two graphs do not intersect. It is case one. This falls to case one, where the y values of the parabola are always going to be larger than the y values of the straight line. For all values of x, the answer is choice A. Quantity A is categorically larger. There we are. I don't know about you guys, my head is spinning on that. Oh, Jesus yes. Christ, that was a hard problem. It was. There was a lot going into I mean, the I mean, I thought, I thought that was the hardest problem that, that you've done so far. I, am, I, am, I, no, am I wrong? It, or? One of the longer ones, yes. One of the longer I mean, ones, yeah. I mean, that was not for the faint of heart, but if you're looking for a really solid grade, normally Professor Blois is a little tame. Um, I'm glad there wasn't a question like this when I was a student on, on the exam. Well, I got an A in your class, but I don't know. I think you, you would have nailed me on well, that. Well, I, I if a student sees this again, all they have to do is set these two equations equal to each other, find the discriminant, and they know the answer right away. They don't have to go through this long, elaborate right, explanation. Right. I'm glad I got the A, and I never have to see this stuff again. All right, guys. Um, I hope you took some learning away with this on the unbelievable Professor Blois. All right. Bye-bye.